thank you. Thank you very much. You haven't come to see me. Um, my name is Claire Balding, and it's my job tonight to thank you. Very sweet. I love you too. I don't know who you are, but you look lovely. Um, it's my job to um, ask some, I hope, decent questions, but you'll get your chance to ask questions as well, of the most extraordinary multi-talented woman that I think basically has ever walked the earth. Um, she was half, exactly. A very, very brief summary of what she's done. She was, of course, half of French and Saunders. She created Ab Fab. She created Jam Jerusalem. She starred in Girls on Top. She wrote a musical. She's written a book that will be a bestseller because all of you are going to buy it tonight and buy it for your families and buy it for everybody you know and give it to them for Christmas. Um, she's been in two French films speaking French, which I'm quite, exactly, that is a new. She sang in Shrek 2. And Julie Andrews, Julie Andrews said, you did very well, dear. <laughs> she is absolutely exceptional, and she is here tonight for your delight. Ladies and gentlemen, Jennifer Saunders. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. It's just, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's a lovely welcome. There are people here tonight who've come from a very, very long way away. There's some know, the people who've flown in from Russia and nice. all sorts. It's hugely nice, but I was going to come out. I didn't realise you've sort of ruined it, really, people. I was going to come out and go, "Good evening, London." <laughs> you can still do that. I've never that. been able to say that. Um, Good evening, London. Good evening, Royal Festival Hall. It's quite exciting. How you all doing? <laughs> <laughs> you read the book. Yes, read the Told book. Them, um, now, the book, first of all, yes. and you can see the lovely cover there behind us. And Jennifer looked fantastic in that cover. Um, why did you call it bonkers? Um, I called it bonkers because my life has been sort of bonkers. And I've never had a plan. It was, uh, there was a lot of choice for title which was, um, I thought, where's the plan? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's never been a plan in my life. I've never thought, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to become a, a comedian, Claire. Um, <laughs> no, that never sort of occurred to me. And so everything's been a bit haphazard and just a bit bonkers. I mean, some of the stories in the book, if you look at them sort of isolated, they're ridiculous. Well, I have to say, can we start then with Dolly Parton's bosoms? Oh. Because I've read the book. You're obsessed with those bosoms, Claire. <laughs> so, honestly, Very funny. since we arrived this evening, she said, I don't know how you did the Dolly Parton bosoms. In half a page. As a footnote. <laughs> I know. And she goes, I was impressed with Dolly and therefore fairly mute. At one point, I went to the loo and sat there for quite a long time trying to think of any Dolly Parton song that I could sing to her. Luckily, nothing came to my head and I returned to the table. Then she goes, they're talking about tattoos and they're showing her. She's with Roseanne Barr as well, by the way, as, as you are. I know, Roseanne and Dolly. They're talking about tattoos. Dolly said she had tattoos. First shock. Then she showed them to us. Second shock. She opened her jacket, and there they were. Not just her tits, but her glorious tattoos. Yes. <laughs> and can I just say, the tits rose up as she opened the jacket. <laughs> it was a magnificent moment. Did you love Dolly Parton? Uh, well, I'm just the biggest Dolly Parton fan. I mean, big country music fan, huge Dolly Parton fan. And what happened was that I was um, in L.A. because Roseanne Barr was going to buy the rights for Ab Fab and do it as a, as a network show, which never happened. Um, but she said, oh, we'll go and eat somewhere tonight. And I said, OK, that'd be fine, yeah. Bear in mind, I had literally just landed, so had major jet lag. We'll go eat somewhere tonight. And we went to this huge restaurant called Morton's, and she said, you'll love it there, and Dolly Parton's going to be there. Would you like to meet Dolly? And I went, would I like to meet Dolly? Are oh, you kidding? Sorry, I turned slightly sort of Jewish then. I'm sorry. Would I like to meet Dolly? Are you kidding? And um, <laughs> what happened? <sighs> um, and, um, and so we were sitting in the restaurant, and she would plied me with so much wine, Roseanne. Yes. She just thought I should drink as much as Adina drinks. And honestly, she just thought, have some more. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. 
And so I was, you know, a bit jet lagged, had a bit too much wine, and we went and met Dolly. And she was just absolutely charming. Tiny, like a little bird, tiny. Like a little tiny budgerigar sitting on your finger. Um, and she was just tiny and, and lovely. And Roseanne has got tattoos, which are, aren't quite as delicate. Did I say that? <laughs> smudged, I would say. Just, they're smudged tattoos. Slightly smudged. I don't know what happened. Oh, that's they were just slightly smudged. Could have been my eyesight. I don't know. But they, <laughs> to me, they look smudged. And, um, and then Dolly said, I have tattoos, as you've just read in my lovely book. A lovely book. And beautifully read, may I say, Claire? Um, beautifully written, makes it easy to read. <laughs> oh, you are so kind. <laughs> I hope they're paying you well. Um, and, um, and Dolly said, I have tattoos. And she literally just opened her jacket. I have to say, it was 9.30 in the evening, which meant the restaurant was empty, because that's what happens in LA. You know, everyone goes home, no one stays out drinking late. <laughs> and, um, and so the restaurant was empty. And, uh, and she just opened the jacket and, and showed us the most beautiful, can I say, the most beautiful tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> and what I like is her words, this will go no further, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, this will go no further. Um, oh, I did check that, though. I did check before I wrote it that it was common knowledge, as they say. What that she had? Yeah, no, I, w I went online and put in Dolly Parton tattoos and it did come up, so phew. It was all right. It wasn't like all my fault. Um, you said at the beginning that life sort of has happened by accident and having yes. read the book um, and knowing you a little bit. <laughs> did it feel like an accident no, to you, Claire? No, the book didn't feel like an accident, but your life has sort of happened by a series of coincidences. And I think mm. fair to say, and, and when you look at this picture of Jennifer as a child, remember it's not a little boy in a dress. Oh, hang on. It's her. Um, yes. That's me, by the way. Oh. oh, it's huge. Grumpy little boy. It's huge. <laughs> um, would it be fair to say you weren't a natural performer as a child? <laughs> I'd say pretty grim and unwilling looking at that, yes. But can I just tell you, my nickname at the time was Podge. That's a nice nickname. No, thank you. No, it was done kindly by my parents, but I was known, <laughs> I was known as Podge. And yes. your parents are huge. The book is dedicated to your father, um, yes. who was a wonderful man, but also yes. the influence of strong, slightly quirky, independent women in your life. Um, yes, you see, these, that, that's my grandmother sitting down there, and that's my great aunt standing up. And they were sort of the basis for the fat women that Dawn and I did. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be so proud. <laughs> Just because they were such a great duo, you know. And my great aunt, Mary, who's, who's standing there holding the drinks, um, I was a, a great racing fan. She's got a marvellous bosom, actually, isn't she? That's a marvellous bosom. No I mean, tattoos, she was a great I racing suspect. fan and was real no-nonsense stuff, you know. And uh, they, were, they were the sort of the inspiration, shall I say, um, for the no-nonsense fat women. Which when and they, they, they sit thrilled. in the kitchen and you'll remember, you know, chop your finger off, stuff and nonsense, yeah, stuff absolutely and nonsense. fine, carry on. Absolutely, pull your socks up, sort of school, which is actually half my school of thinking. Um, but I'm just loving my posture there. I'm thinking that's a very poor posture. <laughs> yes, that is me. Yes, hard to believe, isn't it? And um, two whippets, <laughs> which explains why you now have the wonderful olive. Well, yes, I, I sort of fell in love with my aunt's whippets and I, um, and I, do, I do adore whippets and now I have the lovely olive. He's very beautiful, was, and if you um, don't follow Jennifer on Twitter, you should, just for photos of Olive, as well as everything else, obviously. But what's rather weird, can I say, is that Olive has her own Twitter site, which I have nothing to do with. <laughs> I find that slightly creepy. And Archie they had one for a while, then we pointed out it was slightly creepy, and it disappeared. Okay. He didn't, luckily. But All right, no. Yeah. Hmm. Um, hmm. And your ambitions, hmm. if, if you had them as a child... Yes were really to go to the Olympics. You wanted to ride at the Olympics. I did want to ride at the Olympics because an awful lot of my, my childhood was spent in my head. Um, <laughs> well, it sort of was. I, I was an REF kid, so, which meant that you moved um, house every two years or every three years. So I basically went to seven schools in my life, two of them twice. And um, so it meant we were constantly on the move. So a lot of my time was... The, the best place to be was inside your head. And I'm an incredibly good daydreamer. 
Well, and the lovely thing, as I know, mm. is if you have a pony that you adore... Oh. Next photo, Jennifer. Next photo. Oh, next photo, yes. sorry. Um, is, is that you talk to the pony and yes. the pony listens, even if you've chopped its head off in the photograph. <laughs> I think, the, is it, I think it was that photo was taken. That was a pony called Badger at a riding school. I think it was actually taken because I've got a new Mac. And I think the, the Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling the Mac is the most important thing in that photograph. <laughs> but yeah, but the, the daydreaming on a pony, because the thing is, if you have a pony, and I got one when I was 12 or 13, I think, and um, is that you just allowed out on your own at that age to go anywhere you like just as long as you're back in an hour and a half or something. And you can go out on your own, you can sing to yourself, you can make up your own little stories about going to the Olympics on your pony. <laughs> and my biggest, because my biggest heroine was a rider called Marion Cokes. Does anyone remember Marion Cokes or Marion Mould? And she rode a pony called Stroller, who was 14 too, which is a pony, and went to the Olympics. So that meant that every girl who had a pony <laughs> thought there was a chance that she could go to the Olympics. And my daydream was, was like, you know, oh, someone like from the British team has seen me jumping at the, you know, Cud Cuddington show in Jim Carna. And um, <laughs> it's thinking, yeah, she'd be great. And, and Marion's pony's like gone lame. And so they're, they're looking for someone to replace that pony. Who can it be? Well, it must be Jennifer Saunders, because we saw her jumping at Cuddington. And, um, <laughs> and so she's probably the person to replace with her pony Topaz. And, um, and she'll probably, you know, be able to go to the Mexico Olympics. And then the next half of the ride was taken up trying to work out how they got ponies to the Olympics in yeah. Mexico. <laughs> how would that happen? And then what would you say in your interview when you won the gold medal, which you inevitably would? I you know, know. I'd, I'd dedicate it to Marion Cokes, obviously. Yes. Because she should have been she there. She should have been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were very. That was your dream too, right? To go to the Olympics on a pony. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's what I wanted okay. to do. I'm and not completely on my own here, Claire. No, am I? no. <laughs> and I and I said, you know, and you had those conversations with your careers teacher, and they say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be an inventor. And she said, oh, wonderful. What do you want to invent? I said, <laughs> no, a three-day inventor. I want to ride at the Olympics. But you actually are related to an inventor. Yes. Oh, an inventor. Yes. yes. Because my. <laughs> Back to you. It's all about you tonight. It's actually not about me. I was Much as you might try and make it, it's about you. There, Claire. I was just wanting to, oh, could I have Claire so I could have a, a sip of my water yes. that I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Is that someone I know down there? Yes. Who was that? That was a very mean laugh. Anyway, who's the inventor in the family? Yes, and the inventor in the family um, was married to my great aunt, mm. and he was called Jimmy. And um, he was an inventor. He was an eccentric, basically. And uh, they had this place called Riddings Cottage in um, Caterham, which they eventually had to demolish because so all the inventions had basically stripped the building of any foundations <laughs> or any substance at all. And he, that by the end, was living in a, a polystyrene, a polystyrene-lined greenhouse, which he thought was the, was the new thing, and would obviously take off because you didn't require any heating. It's a very sensible idea. Did yes. you have a base character on him? No, I didn't Why actually. Not? I know. There you go. Insane. Take that one for free. Yes. Um, sports generally. Bonkers too. Hmm? Sorry, I, I was just announcing my next book. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Steady. Um, next photo. Yes. Um, next next photo. photo. So, you um, know, you should actually you be in charge me, of why that. Why don't you give me that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that's better. <laughs> because um, it's so subtle, isn't it? Next photo, Jennifer. <laughs> Um, sport played a huge part in your life. Can you spot Jennifer in this hockey lineup? Yes, the slightly scary one at the front. What's most scary about that picture is the hairdos. Look at those. Everyone's got some sort of curtains. Now, that's at Northwich Grammar School for Girls, and that's probably the fourth form, I would have thought. And I'm the goalkeeper. Excellent. Can you spot that with the pads? <laughs> and and I was only the goalkeeper because I once made the mistake of volunteering. I was actually a brilliant centre forward. Yes, and goal. <laughs> and winger with my speed, my huge speed. Um, <laughs> and I once volunteered to take over in goal when the goalkeeper was sick, and I never got out again. <laughs> that was it. That was my life then, goalkeeper. At Northwich Grammar School for Girls, um, you had a headmistress called Miss Dines. 
She was terrifying. Miss Dines, honestly, it's something, it's almost out of Dickens, isn't it, Claire? The <laughs> it is, reading it, very it similar to Dickens, actually. It's very similar. Very to similar, but better, I feel, better. You thought better, mm, I thought better. I think so. Mm. Um, <laughs> but this was, a, this was one, um, 1975 and four, five, and Miss Dines was the headmistress for as long as I was at, at that school. She was a terrifying creature. There's she a was picture a of her, a little picture of her in the book. We haven't got to the bottom yeah. thing, but honestly, buy the book just to see that picture. Honestly, she is terrifying. She it looks is like yeah, really frightening. A frightening woman who ran that school through fear, and only fear. She would um, always wear a gown, the full black gown. You know, this was in the middle of an estate. This was a, a normal school, but she wore completely the full gown, and she would stand and watch girls coming into assembly and look at them and occasionally just grab one by the shoulder. This, <laughs> this claw would come out and stop them and they'd be sent back. And that meant, oh no, they did something like smile or they, like, <laughs> or they did something like they were chewing gum or they were doing something. But the punishments were terrible, you know. She caned girls. She got taken to court for caning mm. a girl so badly that the girl couldn't sleep or sit down. Um, <laughs> no, it's but, absolutely true. And, and got she, off she was in the, court. Uh, yeah, she got off in court because um, the catalogue... Oh, read out. Can you read out? The well, catalogue of the girls' misdemeanours were hilarious. The three, but the three whacks given, this is from the paper. Yeah. This is from the, from the Daily Mail. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> saying nothing. She had them 13th on her of side. November 1976. Um, it says, the three whacks given to 14-year-old Lynn on her bottom landed Miss Dines, head of Northwich Girls Grammar School Cheshire, in court. Um, the parents brought a pirate assault and beating charge. They claimed that Lynn was punished unreasonably. But then they basically said, that, oh yes, admitted a catalogue of misbehaviour when cross-examined. She said she told rude jokes in the scripture lessons while discussing moral and ethical questions. She made remarks about teachers behind their backs and blew raspberries at them. <laughs> She told lies about having lost homework, which she had not done, and took a classmate's book without permission. She stole a teacher's pen off her desk and offered it to a friend for a pound. <laughs> I think that shows quite a lot of initiative. She'll be in the next series of The Apprentice. She's a genius. And she disrupted the class. Yes. It was, it was an extraordinary catalogue of misdemeanours. A, a pure caning offence, I would have thought all that. Yeah. But she was, a, she was a terrible evil woman and she used to go around town when everyone had left school. The one thing you had to do was you had to wear this little red berry, imagine, a little red berry, and you had to wear it all the way home. You weren't allowed to take it off. As long as you were in school uniform, she owned you. And she would, she would go around town in her car looking for girls. Who'd taken their berry off? I'm not kidding. And we lived in fear of seeing Miss Dines. And there was the time too. She was a bit of a sportswoman, Claire. Yep. I'm sure you'll appreciate this. She um, <laughs> she likes a bit of cricket. We didn't play cricket at the school. We didn't play any cricket. But on the beginning of sports day, there was when all the parents were lined up on the bank to watch, you know, girls dribbling about like this, going, "Don't go so fast, come back." Um, <laughs> Jumping a bit. Ooh. Um, she would say she had a, um, a staff against pupils cricket match organised, and no one really took it seriously except Miss Dines and Miss Barnes, who was the deputy head, was a terribly timid woman who spoke like that. I was so afraid of Miss Dines, and Miss Dines. You know, once the cricket pitch was set up, Miss Dines would stride out in full whites and a cravat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding, full whites and a cravat and tap the crease a little bit and look about, look about, look, check out the field which was just trembling first years like that. <laughs> oh Christ. And the one time I remember was, um, um, oh yeah, Miss Barnes was umpire obviously. And the one time I remember was this first year girl came and bowled underarm at Miss Dines and got her out first ball. I mean, not just the school went quiet, the whole of Northwich went quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew what the hell to do. And uh, Miss Dines looked around, tapped the crease again, looked at Miss Barnes, who went, not out. <laughs> <laughs> and then the girl had to bowl again. I mean, she was terrifying. 
And Jennifer Saunders, it's This Is Your Life, here tonight with us. Yes, this <laughs> time. It's Janet Dines. Well, I, I, do you know something? I wouldn't have written that chapter if I knew she was still alive. I absolutely <laughs> wouldn't have done. She's not still with us. Um, and in fact, when I was on my gap year, my mother sent me a piece from the Northwich Guardian that said um, Miss Dines was leaving the school. I think she was eventually forced out. Phew. And it was a picture of two sixth formers presenting her with a leaving prize that was a shotgun. I mean, <laughs> it was abs I mean, not a word of a lie. It was unbelievable. Let us Terrifying take you out of, of the hell of, of Miss Dines yes, and, and into your into your sort of later <laughs> later childhood. <laughs> and now there, I think I must be about twelve or thirteen. I think there. And oh. you fancied yourself as a photographer and you had this oh, brand yes, new camera. Yes, I was a very fine photographer, yes. Claire. Because you can see the instamatic slung around my shoulder there. <laughs> we, may, we may even have a few examples yes, of your photographs. Yes, there's very good um, <laughs> examples. Beautiful, beautiful uh, examples. The one of the dog is particularly good. Um, I mean, Tracy, Tracy <laughs> Emin is a, is a good friend of yours. And yes, Tracy very Emin gets good. a mention in the book. I, I can't but believe can you I haven't say, shown these to her. It's not my fault, so, Claire. It's, it wasn't my fault. Because they put, the place you put your eye, <laughs> the other end of the camera from the actual lens. <laughs> How do you know what you're taking a picture of? The camera's taking a picture of over there, and you're looking here. No. Um, and there was no focus. We'll move on to, luckily, the person that oh, I think yes. probably saved Jennifer from life as a photographer or, <laughs> or a struggling sportswoman, yes. and that is the lovely Dawn French. Yes, there she is. We love, don't we love? Yes. <laughs> Oh, she'll love that. And the thing is, if you're going to buy this book expecting to find out that Dawn French actually underneath all that loveliness is really horrid, you don't know. She's no. not, because she is lovely. She is, do you know, Dawn and, and I have never in 30 whatever years ever had an argument. No, that's just weird. That is actually. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, oh, that's lovely. No, How sorry, that's lovely. That, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. that's, that's lovely. Just weird. No, I don't think we've ever had a proper argument. Because a double act exists on a kind of compromise and trust, and you can't do it if you're having an argument with someone. You you're can't right. Do it if there's. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> Dawn's in Australia. That's why she's not sitting yes. here. Um, you're right, Claire. Yes. So you met when you were both at. Teacher training, you were on a teacher training course at yes, a drama Claire. school. Yes, at a drama school, Claire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we met at Central School of Speech and Drama School, um, <laughs> which is um, a, a drama school up in Swiss Cottage. Lovely. That's and excellent factual information. Yes, um, Swiss Cottage. The book actually school. starts with both of you in an egg. I'm trying to s listen. I know what I'm doing All here. All right, keep going. The book starts. Yes. yes. Jennifer will be signing copies of her book for one Tell hour and one hour starts. only after this finishes. Um, <laughs> the book starts with you both. Have you a, haven't touched have your a sip. water, have you? I have. <laughs> I have. Have a sip. Um, the book starts with you both mm. in an egg, not in the same egg, in separate eggs. Yes. Why? In an egg. Why, did you say? Yes. <laughs> All right. It does start with me in an egg. And the egg in question, Claire. Is, um, is made out of newspaper because we were told, and this was drama teaching, you have to do things that, are, that you might take into schools. And this was an exercise that a member of staff um, decided was a good idea for us. So the 16 of us, and we're all told to make up a little egg and wrap ourselves in the newspaper. And a friend, or I don't know, close associate, um, then, <laughs> then puts sellotape all around it, so you're totally in an egg. So the 16 adults <laughs> sitting inside newspaper eggs on the floor of a studio, right? Um, <laughs> and we were told then that when we started to hatch, we, could, we were coming into an unknown world. <laughs> Seriously, in a, to an unknown world where we might not even have language. We might not know who we are, and we, we might be frightened. We might be aggressive, you know. And so this was an exercise in sort of, you know, sort of um, new beginnings. 
learning about language, that sort of thing. But basically, we were sitting in a rather nice egg and having a nap um, <laughs> for, for quite a while. And all, then, of course, you hear, you think, oh, God, who's going to come out the bloody egg first? You know, and you think, surely someone's going to take it seriously. And, of course, you know, eventually this one person decides to come out and go, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and go, ooh, 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 ooh. And, and meanwhile, me, Dawn, and my friend Joba are just having hysterics inside the egg. <laughs> and, you know, eventually you make a little hole and look out at the rest of the course. In, uh, trying to make, b pretend they're in a primeval world. They try to steal each other's eggs, their eggshell, and wrap it around them to make a nest. And you think, I can't come out into that, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Just go back I to sleep. I <laughs> can't. And the, so basically, there were left me, Dawn, and Jobo as the three cynical eggs that, um, <laughs> that came out last laughing. Um, only to discover that the teacher had gone to the pub. <laughs> Astounding. But the happiest accident of all is you end up on this training course with yes. the aforementioned lovely Dawn French. Yes. Um, and you start just performing together, just almost for each other's entertainment. Completely for each other's entertainment, which it always has been, actually. I think we sort of found in each other the person we wanted to amuse the most. And, um, and so we just used to, we shared a flat eventually in the last um, year and a half. And uh, we used to, to make up little routines and we used to force, literally go into the sort of shared sitting room with sort of seven people in this flat and make them push the sofas back to the walls. <laughs> they were trying to watch television. And <laughs> we used to make them, force them to put the sofas back to the walls. And we would do a little act for them. Our, our first act was a, called the Menopatsy Sisters, and they were a mime circus act. There's, there's a photograph of them. Which later. even in costume <laughs> took some believing. And uh, so we just used to do it, you know, in our normal clothes for our, for our flatmates and found actually we got a few laughs, mainly our own laughs, but we got a few laughs, and we took that forward to the college cabaret. And then it ultimately on oh, stage... Oh, you've got it. Oh, I've sorry, got it. I've sorry. Done yes. it. I've done it. I've done it. One step ahead. <laughs> You can relax yes. now. It's and all then fine. ultimately to this joyous act <laughs> that you're looking at now, which was the comic strip. Early days of the comic strip. And yes, those are our stage outfits. Um, and fair to say they weren't used to seeing female performers at the, the comic strip because it's not a strip club. It's not might. a strip club. Well, it was, it was, a, it was in a strip club. Oh, it was, was in, it? It was in Raymond's Review Bar. Yeah. Oh, don't look at me like I know. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, Claire. <laughs> Where have you been all your life, darling? Um, it's, it's in Raymond's Review Bar, which was a lot of, a, a lot of little theatres sort of jammed together that had um, nudie shows um, <laughs> and strip tees and all the rest of it. And, but that theatre was free, so Peter Richardson um, hired, rented it for um, a comedy club, as you do. And essentially, you would continue just dressing up and yes. having a giggle. <laughs> yes. Now, Although, actually, that was just to go out, wasn't it? That was actually just to go out. <laughs> That's, yes, we were late to the punk era, Dawn and I. <laughs> but that was, well, we were at college then. That's the flat we used, that's the door of the flat we used to live in. And, um, and we used to go out to parties dressed like that. And we called ourselves, because I think that was almost an act as well, that. I think we called ourselves the Menopause Sisters. At which point we had no idea what the menopause was at all. <laughs> we thought it had something to do with periods. We didn't know. <laughs> but we would we'd dress up like that, and sometimes we'd just go and stare at people on the tube and see if we could frighten them. <laughs> <laughs> we, we couldn't would. afford drink. Come on. <laughs> we had to get our thrill somehow. So yeah. you, find, you find Dawn, and the two of you set yes. off on this you know, extraordinary double act together. But yes. also by the happy accident of timing. You are part of this amazing comedy set. Yes. And the men in it are fairly significant as well because you ended up marrying one of them. Yes, I did. There he is. Indeed. Looking That's rather cool there. In fact, they're all looking well. I think I chose that picture because everyone looks kind of cool in that picture. That's actually in the comic strip filming. That was um, filming Fistful of Travers. Um, tra sorry. <laughs> Dog's got my teeth, obviously. Um, <laughs> Fistful of Travers checks in Spain. And... Um, Yes, that would be in one of the one of the caravans. And yes, I married that one there. The one, the one closest to yes. us. Yes. 
That's yes. the lovely Aid Edmondson, just in case yeah. you didn't know who you were coming to see tonight. But and what you had was no great about, who she married. about <laughs> us joining the comic strip was that there were very few female acts at the time. I mean, they advertised for female acts, which is how Dawn and I got the job, because I saw the advert in the stage. And, um, and we went along and auditioned. And I think, honestly, because we were the only people with bosoms that walked through the door, <laughs> they said yes. And... Uh, and, you know, we got to go on on the slow nights and sort of first on the bill, which was never a good, a good spot, you know, because they had been warmed up. And um, I remember looking through the door into the theatre. It, it was probably only 200 seats or something. And, uh, and just wishing the audience had gone home. <laughs> and just wishing there weren't as many people there. You know, it was terrifying. It was very frightening. But it's an amazing place to sort of have your worst experiences in a way that yes. you are going to learn to be very sharp very mm. quick to make a, a large number of people laugh yes and you can hear that after coming back at you so you know immediately what works and what and doesn't. the great thing is we learned from the other acts because they'd they'd all been at it much longer than we had and they'd been at the um, comedy store as well and just to see their technique of how they got the laughs and how loud you had to be and how you couldn't you couldn't wait you know you couldn't have pauses you had to really punch stuff out and that was a it was a, a massive learning curve that um just one more of the of the lovely aid because i like this picture Aww. this is from you on honeymoon that's us on honeymoon yes <laughs> who, who gave you the matching pajamas Do you know i can't remember i think it was my friend scotty i think yes and it's his and hers uh, matching um night shirts and that was the second probably one of the sort of can i just say that was on a self timer that picture <laughs> <laughs> There was no one else in the room at the time. <laughs> we didn't, you know, get the chambermaid to take it. I think Miss Dines it, was there. Miss Dines <laughs> was there Dines. and said, I shall take the photo. <laughs> no, that was, that was on our honeymoon in the Lake District. But the extraordinary thing was, we look very healthy there, don't we, Claire? We look like we have marvellous tans. Because we had, we had been on a three-week holiday to the Caribbean just before we got married and left my mother in charge of everything. <laughs> We'd literally said, oh, we'd fancy getting married, like, you know, in sort of a few weeks' time. Um, would that be okay? And my extraordinary mother managed to organise the whole wedding, you know, with help from Rick and various people. And we got back and went, oh, great, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, phew, that was a great holiday. Phew, knackered. <laughs> um, but how's, like, the wedding arrangements going? Is they all right? <laughs> they just organised the whole thing while we were away. And you had some, um, some rather good guests at your wedding. We had great guests. You did. I mean, obviously, they're all friends of yours, but... Yeah, I know, Robbie and... Well, Jules played... Jules Holland played the um, organ in the church. So we went out to... Quite cool. Fairly jazzy, nice jazzy number. And, um, yeah, no, we had, we had a nice... Well, it's, it's funny, the people we were working with at the time, you know, Robbie Coltrane and all that lot, because we were all doing comic strip. It was a, it was a, a, good, a good start and kicking yeah. off into comedy that you were going to write, <laughs> co-write. I call that my Mr. Bean face. Yes. <laughs> and this is with Tracy Ullman, Ruby Wax, you, Dawn, and Joan Greenwood. This Joan is, Greenwood, this the is great Joan Greenwood, top. yeah. Um, that, that happened, I think, because we met Ruby through um, our agent, and, um, and we were just so, so impressed with her. She, was such a, she's, she is such a funny person. And, um, and she said, oh, we have to write something. So the three of us, me, Dawn and Ruby, sat down and, and we came up with Girls on Top because I think it seemed like a sort of alternative to the young ones, although, you know, it was completely different. Um, <laughs> quite normal. And we got Tracy in because she was exceptionally funny. And, um, and we just sort of... That, that character, Jennifer Marsh, is actually how I imagined I'd had most of my youth. It was just in the uniform of V-neck jumper, um, air tech shirt, jodhpurs and jodhpur boots. That was, that was basically me. That was my uniform. And then, and then you turned into something else. And this is the... Yes. Um, oh, that's the Menopatsy sisters. That's the Menopatsy sisters. That is the... And please note the nipple tassels on the back of the leotard, which is the <laughs> very special place. It was, we thought it was hilarious, that. Um, <laughs> And they were our mime, our mime circus act. And we took them through to the first um, French and Saunders TV series, I think. And how many series of French and Saunders were there? 
On telly, can you remember? No, I've asked you a question you can't remember. No, sorry, impossible question. Impossible six? question. I, six. Okay. I'm saying but six. But there's a gap. This is why. This is there a gap? Okay. Yes, there was a... Well, yes. Is there? Because when did you write Ab Fab? There's suddenly a gap. Oh. Because Dawn... And Dawn Lenny adopted, a adopted baby. Billy, exactly. Yes. And then there's a gap, and you've got to fill the gap because Maureen, your lovely agent who's here tonight, who's yes. a great part in the book and just basically says, All right, love, whatever you want, love. Yeah. So, a bit posher than that, actually. <laughs> All right, love. All right, love, don't, don't yes. read the contract. I know you yes. don't like details. Just sign it, love, it's yes. fine. Um, Maureen says, Well, why don't you fill that gap and write something? So yes. you come up with. I come up with Ab Fab. You do. Yes, there we are. Oh, so it's a small. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Indeed. That's Joe and I in a little moment off camera. Um, <laughs> small break in the day. We like to fill it. <laughs> and how did you discover Joanna Lumley for, for the role of Patsy? How did that come about? That came about mainly because the original part I'd written for Patsy was actually more of a, a journalist, a more of a hard-nosed journalist, you know. And um, I based the character, not, not the job, but the character on my friend Harriet Thorpe, who um, has been a friend of mine since college, and is honestly one of the most supportive people you will ever meet. And if I say to her, oh God, they're hassling me, Harriet, about this script, and I don't know if I can do it in time. Darling, tell them that, you know, you bloody can. Tell them you bloody can, and they're bloody lucky to have you, darling. <laughs> you could do that standing on your head. Fuck them, fuck them, sweetheart. <laughs> You just tell them you can bloody do it. If not, tell them to piss off. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> and, and so I sort of face it's great. You know, you go and say, darling, you can do it. You've done it so many times before. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> tell them they're bloody lucky to have you. And uh, so I sort of have that idea for the character, the character that supports the other one totally, whatever happens, you know. And that is the Patsy character. They, then they support each other in their misbehavior. You know, and, and in, their, in their tragedy, actually. And, um, um, but, but the actress I sort of had thought of wasn't available. And <laughs> Great. <laughs> how lucky is that? Um, no, no, I'm not telling you who. Um, <laughs> but um, I'd seen um, Joanna on the Ruby Wax show, and she played a sort of downtrodden actress, sort of supposed to be her. And she was really, really funny. And I think it was Aid who said, you know, why don't you, why don't you ask for Joanna Lumley and see if she'd be up for it? And I thought, oh, Joanna Lumley? <laughs> Joanna Lumley with a lovely voice. I don't know if I, you know, you just think, <laughs> I don't know. But um, so we got her in for a, well, it wasn't a read through. But basically, we got her in to see if she would even consider it. And um, after sort of a few sticky moments, <laughs> which were just, I didn't know what to say to her. I didn't know how to read the part with her or what to say, you know. I just remember eventually saying, um, maybe like, mm. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's really good, really enjoyed that. Mm. Uh, maybe not such a nice voice. <laughs> Like that. And I remember saying that, maybe not such a nice voice. And after that, honestly, Patsy is Joanna. She, she created that. And, you know, within um, a week of meeting her, I, I'd rewritten it for, for that because she brought a lot of her history to it. You know, she brought all the old modeling thing, the, the 60s, everything. She brought all that stuff to it. And you've become characters that exist in your own right away from the, the, yes. <laughs> away from the actual series because... Um, this photo, this is a very, very funny That's story. Now, this is on. a very funny story, I have this to say. This is honestly, oh God, <laughs> this, this story, it was, this is kind of the height of Ab Fab. And we used to get a lot of perks in Ab Fab. We'd get to lots of trips to New York and stuff because the show was going out there and they would throw us parties and we'd do interviews and things. And um, we'd been to a few parties there, and they were incredibly over the top and camp, these parties. And we'd arrive, looking like just normal us, um, to find massive drag queens dressed as Patsy and Eddie <laughs> standing there, you know, looking over our heads going, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? And, um, and we were going, we're, we're here. We're, hello? Yes. Oh. And they'd look at us and I'd go, Oh, shame. 
And it was like we thought, well, we couldn't live up to it, you know, because they were expecting these massive characters. And I, I sort of say it's like, you know, being a real mouse going to Disneyland and meeting <laughs> Mickey and Minnie. It's just, that's a mouse. It's like, that's a mouse. Um, and so we thought we were then offered this fantastic thing. It was um, Gay Pride Week in New York and the LGBT Awards. Um, and they said, would we come over and accept an award, you know, from the gay community and everything. And, and it'd be at the New York Senate building and we'd get a little proclamation and everything. And we said, yes, of course. And we said to Joanna, do you know, we should really, we should really dress up for this because we've been so mousy before, haven't we? <laughs> and she said, yes, darling, absolutely, darling. I think, darling, a little bit over the top, I think, sweetheart, don't you? <laughs> um, I, think, I think, you know, as close to us, sweetheart, as we can, um, you a little bit Eddie, me a little bit Patsy. And um, so we did, and that, that's what happened. I, I, <laughs> that, that is how we went, dressed to this event. Such a mistake. Such a mistake. We were greeted by sober suited senators. <laughs> and for a while, not a gay man in sight. Imagine the horror. And taken into the Senate Hall. Yes. And sat on sort of rows of seats, faced by other rows of seats, which was the audience all dressed in brown, as far as I could see, all brown. <laughs> and then the ceremony began, and it was a ceremony really honoring some extraordinary gay people and gay people who had died, and there were... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> people who'd struggled against adversity, Um, and people who'd, you know, transgender people that had now become senators went up and people cried. There was a lot of crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the other thing, can you I just say, that on, on, a the speech. Pl on the plane over, <laughs> Joanna had said to me, I said to Joanna, I said, do you think I need to make a speech? Mm -hmm. She went, no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I said, well, you know, today if you were, should I die? Honestly, 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 all you've got to do is um, say, hello, sweetie darling, hello, sweetie darling. Um, <laughs> and um, I'll go up and I'll say, cheers, thanks a lot, cheers, thanks a lot. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then, that, yeah, that's honestly all you need to do. I says, right, so no speech, no speech, no speech. So I'm now sitting with the third person coming up and making the audience cry, and then someone at the piano singing another song of sadness. And I look at Joanna, and she looks at me, and she goes, darling, you should have made a speech. <laughs> sweetheart, sweetheart, th think of something now. You've got to make a speech. You've got to make a speech. <laughs> I'm thinking nothing. And then I know it's coming to our time, and I'm just feeling like a fool. I mean, look, at we were dressed pathetically. And then, <laughs> and then the senator comes up and goes, now the major proclamation of the day, and here to honor... Um, Jennifer Saunders and uh, Joanna Lumley, Whoopi Goldberg, and, so <laughs> <laughs> and then Whoopi comes out and makes such a nice speech, a really heartwarming speech, Claire. <laughs> and um, and then we go up, we go up. <laughs> I, honestly, I could have shot Joanna Lumley at that moment. <laughs> I could honestly have shot because we had tried to try to make, say something quite serious about how lovely and how <clears throat> how meaningful everything was, and uh, how lovely to be in New York, and cheers, thanks a lot, cheers, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, sweetie darlings, and ran. <laughs> oh, it was a nightmare. Amazingly. It was a nightmare. Um, America forgave you because um, you got a part in Shrek 2. Look how tall, ridiculously tall that person is, standing next to me. <laughs> I'm in heels there, Claire. That's crazy, isn't it? Rupert Everett is the tallest man in the world. So most of the pictures were basically my hair and Rupert Everett. <laughs> <laughs> and you took a part in Shrek 2 singing. Yes. Singing. Yes. 
Who knew? Who knew? Mm. I certainly didn't. No. <laughs> and um, no, but I say singing. I, look, I, I did a lot of takes on the song. It was quite tough. And I had my friend Simon Brint there going, up now, Jennifer, up now, stop. <laughs> Down. <laughs> down a bit, a bit flat, a bit flat, like that. Um, so I had someone leading me through the whole song. Um, and, but the, the terrible thing was that Julie Andrews, who I sat next to on, the, on Cannes to watch the film, I'd never seen the film before, and I'm, I'm the one singing, and I'm sitting next to Julie Andrews. And I'm thinking, I wonder if I can distract her during the song. I wonder if I, <laughs> wonder if I, wonder if I can say something to Julie Andrews during the song. To, you know, say, oh, look who's behind us. Look who's, look who's over there, Julie. You know. Um, I've seen Dolly Parton's tits. That would have done I'm, it. I would have done it. <laughs> Actually, that would have done it. Yes. Damn. Um, but, you know, then the, the, the singing comes up and I go, <laughs> Julie, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I think I actually said sorry to <laughs> <laughs> sorry that it's me that has the vocal cords now. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and she said, you did very well, dear. I mean, that's the greatest it compliment. Is. From Julie Andrews. Who is amazing. You she's know, a big heroine. Yeah. Although it's one She's here tonight. No, she's, she's not. Is she? Um, <laughs> <laughs> everything everything is, is going amazingly well. Everything you start to do becomes a huge success. You have all these incredible experiences. It's like this is your life. It, it feels like it to me, Jennifer Saunders. Yes. Um, you're, you know, you're in Cannes at the launch of Shrek 2, sitting next to Julie Andrews. You're going on amazing parties, and there are some great, great stories about the parties you went to. Mm. You're meant to be taking a year off. You retire French and Saunders. You're yeah. on tour. You and Dawn decide to retire French and Saunders. You take a year off, yeah. and you're meant to have a rest. Yes. And this happens. Yes, that happened. <laughs> yes, I had a haircut, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> I had a drastic haircut that year. Um, no, I got breast cancer. And it was a bizarre because we'd had the big ending of um, French and Saunders over in New Zealand. And um, I came home and thought, no, I must go for that mammogram. And went for it and uh, found the lumps. And so that was basically the next year <laughs> taken up. Actually, the next two years, really, when you come to think of it. But, but, Glory B, here in full health now. Yes, in full life now. And as one does get constantly checked and hopefully constantly told one's all right. Constantly told it's fine, <laughs> you know. And... Uh, but it was an issue. I, I did think, should I write about it in the book or should I just ignore it? And I thought, well, no, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know. It's the only time in my life I've actually had a plan, and that's the truth, you know. You have a, suddenly you have a routine, and I don't normally have a routine. And you have a routine, you know, that's given to you by doctors. You have to do this on certain days. You can't, you know, your life isn't your own. And that's why in the book I say it's like a job that you don't have to work for. It's like... Here's what you're doing today. And you just, you just do it until you're better. Mm. And hurrah yeah. is better. Thank you. <laughs> yes, now, this couple is of, when I was a fashion things, star. A couple of things just to, to finish on, and we're going to give you a chance to, to ask questions in a moment. And oh, then is, just it, to is that time gone so fast? Yes, amazingly, I know. Oh, really? um, well, you're, well done, you're, you. You've organised that very well. Thank you, say. thank you. <laughs> thank you. I've tried, I looked at my watch well every done. now and again. But, um, just a couple more things. Your, your dress sense generally. Would yes. you look beautiful tonight? Doesn't Jennifer look lovely tonight? <laughs> but Who dressed you? <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Whereas there you look... Yes. Yes. No, I think I, I think I looked... I thought I looked pretty great, actually. <laughs> I think everything I was wearing, probably at that time, I'd got from a flea market, as you used to. Um, or army surplus store, always very good. Um, and I'm just hoping that in that bag there's some proper clothing. Um, <laughs> and I'm because wearing. the picture is beautifully framed and you are in the centre of it, yes. clearly someone else took it. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'd say that's a Dawn French photo, actually. I think we must have been on tour. And um, she, I probably thought she was photographing me because I looked so great. Yes. <laughs> Um, mm. And Life Now is full of, of the book, obviously, which you've yes. dedicated a lot of time to, but also you get a chance now to fulfil your love of horses and yes. possibly not you riding it, but have a horse that goes to the Olympics. And, yes. this is, and I've met this horse, and he's really nice. He's great. This he's is my horse, Freddy. Orbain Boy is his proper yeah. name, and he's ridden by a rider called Piggy French, and that is her name. Um, 
which allows you still to be French and Saunders, Can I tell you a funny story about like. that quickly? Yes. Which is, I was with my friend Mandy um, at Badminton Horse Trials, and we were with Piggy, French. And uh, she went on the phone to a friend of hers and went, yes, I'm here with Jennifer Saunders and Piggy French. And um, her friends... <laughs> And her friend said, is that what you call Dawn? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes. And he's, um, he's only four, but he's, he's doing extremely well. And it, it's, it's kind of... Um, it's, it's, ni it's nice to be back in a horsey world. It's lovely, yeah. It's a very nice world to yeah, be in. Yeah, someone it. else does the mucking out, which I like particularly. Lovely. Yeah. Um, and you have two Freddies in your life, because this my is other the other one. That's my grandson. Mm. Oh, it's, it's, honestly, isn't he the most beautiful He is, he is actually the most divine. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he's, he's, it's fantastic being a grandmother. I never thought it would be so exciting, but I, I kind of, you get withdrawal symptoms when you don't see them for a bit, and... You know, you just know that that's going to grow up and, and take me to the Woolsey. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's an amazing thing that Jennifer ever got this book written, actually, because, frankly, all she wanted to do was look at pictures of Freddie on her iPhone, but she has got it it's written. It's true. It's a very good read, as I'm one of the few people who have read it, because it goes you. on sale on Thursday. But for your Thank delight you. tonight, um, and as I say, she will be signing. Ladies and gentlemen, Jennifer Saunders. Thank you. Thank you. She's such a professional. <laughs> oh. Now, thank you. Thank you very much.